Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We didn't see many people paving their own ways like we decided to, so we created this podcast to talk to others who were brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we learn from them, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less traveled. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. Welcome back to the Coast Podcast. My name is Emily Given, and I own a virtual assistant agency in Linwood, Washington. And my name is Whitney Popa. I own a communications consultancy in Edmonds, right up the road from Carly Tenzin, who owns Iris Wellness Center. She is a doctor of Eastern medicine and acupuncture, and she has the most fun, lasery, and uh, girly, but you don't have to be a girl to experience them things like B12 shots and acupuncture and she actually does it correctly which I didn't know I wasn't having it done correctly place with beautiful views of the ferry in Edmonds and her whole business is so zen so beautiful so amazing for everybody that we had to have her and have her explain what she does because it's so much more than acupuncture and lasers and B12 shots, especially for women. So Carly, welcome. Thank you for being here. And we can't wait to talk more about your business. Thanks guys. It's so good to have that to be here on a podcast. I've never done one before. Um, and if it's okay for me to say, you guys have both been in the clinic and clients and patients. So, you know, um, the process that I do well, um, and you guys are such good patients. So it makes my life a lot easier too. I'm so. not, but <laughs> we do have to work on a few things with you. We're, we'll have the come to Jesus talk soon, Emily. Okay. I was yeah, thinking and- about that the other day. We should actually like dig into that first because I feel like there's a lot of psychology in what you do with your patients. Oh, yes. I mean, I want to say yes, but in Chinese medicine, Eastern medicine, there is no psychology department. So I can't say I'm a psychologist or those are the things we do. But in, in Eastern medicine, the word human in Chinese contains mind, body, and spirit. They don't, they don't compartmentalize the human experience quite like we do in the West where we go to a doctor to fix our bodies. We go to a psychologist for our mind and then we go see a spiritual person for our spirit. I mean, I I suppose you can be super talented in one of those fields, but Chinese medicine, that's why it's so amazing is because especially trained in the proper styles. Um, I, I really had the privilege of going to, I want to say one of the best schools. It was a lineage based medicine all at world tradition. And it really, really solidified a strong foundation for me that when you're working with people to create transformation, you ha- you can't just look at physical ailments. You can't just look at the mind and you can't just work on the spirit. I mean, look at any one of those and they, they don't work. Go to a guru and then, you know, you're confused about how to live on planet earth or go to the doctor and they can give you pills, but they are not listening to what might be going on and causing those problems. So sorry to jump right in, but yeah, no, No. it's, it's all of it. And it's, people are very complex and the human experience is very complex. So I don't know. I feel really grateful to know a lot of that stuff and be able to help people if they want to be helped on, on resolving illness on all levels. And that's really the best way to do it. And I think that's why we get really good results and have good reviews and stuff like that because we we like to dive deep with people um, so we can make really, really big changes in people's worlds on all levels. 
Yeah. And I asked too about the psychology because when you did my AccuGraph, which is basically the way I've been explaining it, it's like the computer program of like what feeling your pulse and looking at your tongue is. It just like spits it out visually for people, which I feel like in kind of our Western minds and our instant gratification world, it's just like an easy way to to see what you're feeling from us. And it's like, oh, your liver's off and that's tied to this. Like, are you stressed? And I'm like, well, shit, yes. <laughs> and so it, like that's it, it like goes into, you know, mind body connection and all of those things that are so tied together. And that's cool. I didn't even know that about yeah. the Chinese the, medicine. Yeah. The AccuGraph is super cool. And the more I use it, the more I'm blown away. So I did a Bell's palsy person a couple weeks ago and scanned. And as you guys know, the AccuGraph, it had all purples, which was a split from left to right sides. And she didn't have active Bell's palsy. So I was like, what is going on on your left side? Like there's something here. Like every one of the face channels where the nerves innervate was purple, like a split. She's like, I, you know, nothing, nothing. And I was like, why is your eye different on that side? You know, did something happen? And she had mentioned that she had Bell's palsy. And then randomly enough, a whole bunch of stuff actually had unfolded after our visit, like a left kidney stone and, and stuff like that. So anyway, I scanned this new lady and I figured it would be split, but it was a super high bladder channel. And you're like, bladder, like, what does that have to do? Cause everything else was pretty normal. And I was talking with Kyleen, who's also a wizard with pulses and herbs. And she's like, Oh yeah, of course it's the, the Thai um, tai Yang. So the, the bladder and lungs is our first defense against external pathogens. So most people who have Bell's palsy were exposed to a lot of wind or cold, and then their immune systems kind of tank down. And then so a latent viral infection can, you know, if you have shingles or something like that, and that the nerve, it's a theory, they don't really know why Bell's palsy happens, but it paralyzes the facial nerve. So your body, when you're outside on a cold walk, you're not properly dressed, prepared, and covering your face and your neck, and then your immune system drops, and then the virus can kind of spike up in the body, and then it paralyzes the facial nerve. So in the chart right there, it was her bladder channel being attacked, like super high. So, you know, if you really learn to use it and diagnose, it's so cool. It's like Eastern medicine way back when they knew how to look at the tongue, read the pulses, and diagnose. And this just brought it to like super current modern technology. So way back when in Eastern medicine, they knew that there were certain relationships with nerves and organs in the body. The heart and the kidney, we know in biomedicine pathophysiology that the heart and kidneys are related and connected. So the kidneys can affect heart function. So if we're really stressed out and pumping adrenaline in our body, our heart rate speeds up. So when you have a reading with a really elevated heart, nerve, pathway, channel, however you want to call it, you can use Eastern medical terms or Western medical terms, that means that, you know, you want to look to the kidneys and see if they're depleted. Are you having like adrenal fatigue where you're pumping all this energy, adrenaline into the body, and so then the heart channel gets elevated, which would produce symptoms of anxiety, or by the end of the day, you can't sleep because you're so worked up. So you can accurately diagnose and, and see what's going on. It's like a circuit breaker in a house. Energy can't be created nor destroyed. So if one circuit is running really high, then you know that there's less energy in other circuits. And ideally, we want the nervous system and all the organs to be feeding, the energy to be feeding everything equally. So everything's in harmony or balance. Not to be cheesy, but that's homeostasis. Yeah. Yeah. I want to ask about adrenal fatigue. It's a buzzword. It is. How do you feel about that? Like, do you wish people were more educated on what it actually meant? Or are you glad that they know it at all? Because then they can start digging in? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's my specialty. Like, I studied the body in medicine for for many years, so it's like a CPA knows more about that stuff than I do. So a lot of people just don't know, and that's okay. And in, again, Chinese medicine, they knew the body, mind, spirit, and how it all worked. And they have so many diagnoses and patterns, and you would call it Jing deficiency. Our kidneys, we have different... Okay, let me break this down. 
there's different ways we can like build up energy in our body. One is through food. We call it nutritive chi or nutritive energy. It's post heaven chi. So you're born and you have to eat to sustain your body. But there's one called prenatal chi, like pre heaven essence. And that's what you get through your genetics. It's from your parents. Again, the big, the biggest misconception about Eastern medicine is that there's a language barrier. We use these really weird terms that no one's ever heard of in the West. We have a whole different biomedical language, which is adrenal fatigue. We call it Jing deficiency. It's the same shit. It's just, we have a really poetic and cool understanding of the body, mind, spirit. So adrenal fatigue, yeah, it's real. And we call it Jing deficiency. It's your kidney essence you get from your parents. And if you deplete that, that savings account that you're born with doesn't really come back. So when people are overworking, participating in activities like, you know, lots of drugs, alcohol, you know, they even talk about like sexual promiscuity, it can deplete your savings account that you're born with. Not yeah. you're not so, pro ho and out. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's more like addiction, I want to say. People who are who have sex addictions, they come in and they have bags under their eyes. They bald early. You know, their bones become brittle. I know that sounds crazy, but there's a whole, a whole thing for people who burn the candle at both ends, per se. So I have a question: What made you interested in Eastern medicine? Like, what did you do before you did this? I want to know where Carly started. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I have so many good stories. I don't, this is funny. How far back do you want me to go? As far as you want. (sighs) Okay. There's some really cool stories. How much time do we have? We have a whole hour as long as you want. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I kind of feel called because it's, it's a really cool story where, you know, I had kind of a turbulent upbringing, childhood. I don't know if it was just my spirit or soul or like the situation I was in, but like a super alcoholic father. I went to a private Christian school. People were really wealthy. We were not. There was a lot of hypocrisy. It was tough. And you know what? It might be tough for all kids going to school in America. We have a really unhealthy culture. And I just remember from a young age, being like, yeah, I pretty much don't belong here. So I was experimenting, every drug on the planet, you name it, I did it. Because I was curious, like, why? what the fuck is life about? Why am I here? And, you know, I, I got pretty far out there getting arrested. Yes, I've been arrested. <laughs> you can edit this out, I don't know. Um, but I, I want you guys to know, because it's, it's a cool story of how it all turned around. So I think it's helpful for was... people to know. I don't mean to interrupt you, but like I think yeah. all of yeah, this no, context is so cool for people to have of like you can be whatever you want to be and you can change your mind and you can be multiple yous and it all brings you to where you are in this moment and I think that's so empowering for people to know. It's like not shameful yeah. or embarrassing. It's yeah. just part of your path. Thank you for that. Yes. I moved out when I was 15. I was like, fuck this. I can't handle all the yelling and screaming and them telling me what to do. I just wanted to be free. So I moved into a good girlfriend's house and her father was Japanese. And I remember being like, yeah, I'm pretty much out of here. Like, I remember I was driving my red convertible Mustang and just crying. I'm doing Adderall, Ritalin. I'm getting straight A's, but I'm getting in trouble. Like I had this crazy dichotomy. Like I had this perfect life. I remember like the principal calling me into the office so many times. It was a big school. So her opening to look at my grades and be like, yeah, look, you're failing. And it was like A plus, A plus, A plus, A plus. And she'd look at me and be like, I'm so confused. On one hand, I'm kicking ass in the Western world, but in the other part of me, I know it's all bullshit and I want nothing to do with it. So I remember screaming at my Mustang and being like, to God. And I had planned out my suicide, which is up here in Edmonds down 196. That big hill, I was just going to take my Mustang and me and my friend Christina, we both were going to go out together and we were like arguing on who was going to be the driver and who was going to be in the passenger (laughs) and we're going to have a bunch of booze in the back and it was going to explode. You know, it was, I don't know, wild times. And I remember being like, if you don't fucking tell me why I'm here and what the purpose of my life is, I'm out. So here's your chance. 
And I, it was like an ultimatum, basically. So whatever that sent out into the world, my life changed. And it, it's weird. So Christina, um, who I was living with, her parents were in like Edmonds Rotary and they were doing a volunteer trip to Vietnam to like give wheelchairs and helmets because lots of children were dying from motorbike accidents over there. And they were like, yeah, you're welcome to come with us. Um, it's 3,500 bucks, you know, it, it's a couple week trip and yeah, you just come up with the money and, and you guys can come with us. And I was like, well, I'm 16. I don't live with my parents. I don't talk to them. I have no idea how I'm going to go, but something deep inside me just knew like I am going to go. And so my mom called me and she's like, Hey, you have something in the mail. It looks important. You should come pick it up. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Drive over there got there, I opened the envelope, and it was $3,500 from a car accident claim I had gotten into the year prior. And the money was due the next day. Oh my gosh. I and believe I like, in oh. all of that so wholeheartedly, like, you're gripping me with this story. I'm like, virgin suicides, yeah. now, not that you are, <laughs> you know, you know, but like, then we're we're manifesting but not knowing and yeah keep going <laughs> yeah yeah I, ha I have so many wild stories of being a reckless teenager like I mean oh my god I, and, and then those experiences of like my weed being laced with PCP and then having my first out-of-body experience at the age of 15 it kind of these little mini events that brought me to where I am <laughs> so the story gets weirder where, okay, I turn in the check on our way to Vietnam. And mind you, Christina and I were living together. It was, it was such a cute relationship. We were best friends, sleep in the same bed, wake up in the morning, get ready for school, drink coffee together. I mean, we were like platonic buried teenagers. It was, it was, it was a really cool relationship to have at the age. So we're like at night, we're like practicing, trying to talk to the other side and like doing seances and playing with energy and and really intrigued with what was beyond this boring high school life that we were living in Edmonds. Again, doing mushrooms, like trying to figure out what the meaning of it all is, you know? So I landed in Vietnam and yes, new sights and smells. So we're on the bus and we're playing with energy and her dad comes by and kind of brushes off our hand. So we're like, whoa, like, does your dad see energy or what the heck? Christina's dad is Japanese and he learned from his father and his father learned from his father this really cool form of, they call it sen and so, the magic touch. So anytime our knees were hurting or even my stepdad was having a stroke and he would fix it. I mean, you'd be screaming, but he was amazing at this form of medicine. Super famous in Seattle, impossible to get into him. So anyway, another lady sat down next to us and she's like, I, I see what you girls are doing. You're playing with energy. And we're like, God, this is so weird. You know, I had gone from this virgin suicide to manifesting $3,500 to this whole new world being opened up to me. So she sat down and basically was telling us how she's a gatekeeper. And at a young age, her son's best friend had committed suicide and basically appeared before her. And it took her a minute to be like, wait, you're, you're, like, you're dead. Like, how are you here? And he basically was traumatized and not ready to cross over to the other side. And so she helped him feel better about moving from this life to the next. So anyway, she's in Vietnam telling us that she is there to help souls that were traumatized from the war and were trapped in between crossover and we just are, our minds are blown right going from wanting to leave this world to now being really intrigued with what the world was showing me that there was more to it and that I had known this so it was really validating and to be interested in life again intrigued like life was so like what's so cool about having a job climbing the corporate ladder all those things you guys talk about when there's so much other cool stuff happening Long story short, I, I really wanted to learn this medicine from, from Christina's dad. I had seen what it had done for people, and then I had my own experiences going to Western medicine doctors and them just completely brushing off my concerns and writing me a prescription. 
I was really unimpressed by that. <laughs> I begged him to teach me. He basically said it, it wasn't for women and that you needed strong muscles to do it. I was very disappointed. It took me a long time to work through that reality because it would have been so easy to just learn from somebody what you want to do rather than go to college, get student loans, and the path I had to take was much longer and harder, but I suppose it was a good path and meant to be. So I got my undergrad in health science, chemistry, anatomy, physiology, and kind of teetering with the idea of going to medical school but again, had more validating experiences that were really like, no, my path is the healing path, not medicine, medicine. And then what's funny, when I was 16 or 17, I was looking for a, a temple to live in, like a Taoist meditation. I just basically wanted to go away and like learn ancient healing arts forever. So I found a school that was a 10 year apprenticeship program from a 64th generation Taoist master. I know it sounds crazy. 10 years. And I was like, perfect. I want to live in a temple and I want to learn this stuff. And because I looked at that when I was 17, by the time I had graduated around 24, the Eastern medicine was kind of catching on here. And she had switched it from a 10 year apprenticeship program to now what they call traditional Chinese medicine schools, which are accredited. And we have all this licensure. So I went to Hawaii, kind of expecting to be over the moon with this medicine. And it it had changed. It had started to become standardized here in the West. All the magic was taken out. I knew something was still missing from the medicine. So I had graduated with my undergrad off to what I want to say, like Eastern medical school. And it, it didn't have all the secrets and, and stuff I was really hoping to learn. So I read this little green book. It's in my treatment room. And I read it and it had all the magic, all the magic of our mind, body, spirit, a simple book, amazing. My mind was blown. So I moved to Boulder, Colorado, where J.R. Worsley, the oral tradition I was talking about earlier, he had started a school in Boulder, Colorado, where his daughter and wife, late wife, he had passed away, um, were continuing the tradition of five element acupuncture. So I went down there and did a four year master's degree in clinical internship. And it was amazing. It was just absolutely amazing. So that's where I got my foundation for what I do now. What a cool, amazing yeah. story. Yeah, I'm obsessed. I didn't know we could love yeah. you anymore. <laughs> yeah, lots of good stories. And it's so cool, too, that you were willing to see things differently, too. Like, I know when I was a teenager, it really takes, like, being shaken to wake up. And, and that you asked for that guidance and it was really like had to be shoved in your face, you know, cause like the older you get, the more you can kind of feel nuances or be open to intricacies. Whereas like you're a teenager, you need to be smacked in the face with these things. And so I love how the universe smacked you in the face with all of it. Like for me, it was my mom asking for the secret for, uh, Christmas and then the DVD came out and I was voracious so I read all of it and watched it with her and and that's like really where things changed for me too yeah so funny a couple stories just came to my mind where I was living with my best friend and his wife um Alex was into all this stuff A Course in Miracles and we were like from this Christian school so like we look at her like she was the biggest weirdo but once the spirit world kind of opened up to me or whatever you call it this this mystery of life that was intriguing I actually found some of her Deepak Chopra CD tapes so literally I had you know like the CD thing and I'd like put it in my pocket with headphones and walk through Edmonds and listened to Deepak Chopra CD tapes and like, oh my God, like mind blown stuff. Reading the Tao of Pooh and Siddhartha and like, I mean, so funny. Like, I don't know, life was, was so, it was so exciting to have some of these little secrets contained in these books. It made life worth living. I always say that. I think teenagers these days, I mean, what a drab outlook to own a house that you can't afford and to go into debt and it wars and inflations and shootings and lockdowns. And I mean, what fun is that? It's pretty sad. We see a lot of trauma happening right now. You know, I want every teenager to buy the Tao of Pooh and Siddhartha. 
or whatever, you know, that book that lights their fire. And that's really funny, circling back to people in medicine. You know, when people come in for migraines or whatever it is, sometimes it's just about them hating their jobs and being stressed out every day. This one client comes to mind. It was like, do you really like your life? Like, what's going on? What's... And she was talking about her job was so stressful, and it all shifted, and her migraines went away. So I feel like when you are aligned with your purpose and doing what you love and excited, not that it's easy and it's all glamorous, it's totally not, but it's at least something that lights your fire you know you have to have that joy in life yeah yeah and with regard to purpose like you're amazing at acupuncture I experienced this firsthand but I want to hear more about like mom belly mend and how your personal experience led you to creating that because I think it's I just had a conversation with my best friend last weekend where she was like yeah and I had told her about you and the things that you offer she doesn't live here anymore but I was like I really don't want you to get a mommy makeover because there are so many different ways that you can approach this like if you can avoid it but the doctor that she saw was like yeah, if you do the tummy tuck, you ha- your scar is hip to hip. You have to be leaned over like the number seven for a week. Walking around with your walker, you have to sleep like that. All these crazy things where it's like, that's not going to make you look good in a bikini either. Just to have this like manufactured flat tummy, which is like one thing. It's fine if like that's what works for you, but just the amount of pain and then also like a huge scar to show for it too I would really have to be pushed far to to go down that route and I told her like there's got to be somebody like you nearby and if not maybe she just needs to move out west I don't know but that what you offer to women and the trauma that their bodies have endured and how they feel about that it, I think is so powerful. So I, I'd love for you to speak to that a little bit for people. Yeah. So as you know, I'm like a serial entrepreneur. I cannot stop thinking about ideas and how to bring something into the world. And it kind of came naturally through one, my own experience with having a home birth gone wrong, ended up with a C-section and having residual pain and numbness. And it was affecting my quality of life. They call it chronic post-surgical pain. It's actually pretty common. There's probably a lot of women suffering with it needlessly. And they'll go to their healthcare provider and they're like, yeah, it's normal. You have a scar, go to massage or do whatever, which might help a little bit. But I, at the time was working with a naturopath and she injected my scar with a treatment called neural therapy, which breaks up the scar tissue and kind of resets the flow of ions through the area. If you want to get really dorky, there's a couple theories about why it works. And within one treatment, it was like 99% better. And I was like, oh my God, like this is so cool. And it's in my scope. So I ended up learning the injection therapy. And then we got this cryoslimming machine that eliminated the pooch. And then I got microneedling, which helped with tightening skin and, and stretch marks. So it just kind of came to me. I'm like, you can do like a mom belly men procedure after pregnancy and kind of address the most common concerns women have, which is skin laxity, chronic post-surgical pain, which is honestly my favorite because it's not just cosmetic. It actually helps people who are suffering, which is really my main focus. And then you can add on these other treatments to help tighten everything back up. It's not for everyone. Again, there are candidates for the mommy makeovers. If you have too much skin, You'll never tighten that with non-invasive treatments like we do. But there's a lot of people who would benefit from these less aggressive, non-invasive treatments. Again, in particular, the C-section scars are my absolute favorite because it helps people get out of pain. I had a lady who was sneezing, and she was like, I literally have to brace myself. And she, eight years, she had a C-section eight years ago. She's like, it's like an eight of ten pain every time I sneeze. We did. I think we ended up doing three injections. The pain was pretty much gone. So it's pretty cool. Same with secondary reactions that happen from scar tissue. Adhering to the abdominal wall, it can cause secondary conditions like constipation or menstrual cramps. So you can take care of some other things too. I was just going to say, I've, I'm have i doing C-section scar revision with Carly right now too because my C-section, I have like a weird... 
Uh, I think you said it was the adhesions probably that like stuck to the side and I have like a, it's like super puffy all around my scar. So we're working on that as well, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. And you'll see it's a complaint where you'll kind of get this fluid buildup above the scar and that's because the lymphatic drainage, et cetera, is kind of stuck there where the scar is. So when you unbind that scar, everything can kind of flow better through the area. And I've done some M sculpting on my belly. I just, I think I'm going to start working with a personal trainer and all I want is just a little more tightness. So those in combination. Yeah. So diastasis recti. Yeah. So when you have that separation of the abdominal wall, you can use what we call, you know, M sculpt, cool tone. They all use the same technology called high intensity focused electromagnetic pulse. And you basically tighten the muscles back together and it works great. I mean, that's the first thing people report is that the gapping closes even after the first treatment. So yeah, mom valley is my little, I'm trying to perfect it. I'm getting new technology all the time to improve results. I take it super seriously. No, I have a lot of fun, but I really want people to be happy with the results. So I'm always playing and doing stuff and giving stuff away for free so I can get the results super bomb. And one of the things that we've talked about with regard to women specifically and why I kept bringing it up is that like there are so many things that are like quote unquote women's issues that like doctors just blow off like especially the c-section scars and numbness and all of that so spreading awareness about the fact that like no you don't have to live with this discomfort and there are things that you can do to help yourself that aren't super invasive people don't even know they jump straight from like oh i had this baby and now i'm gonna go have a mommy makeover like there's so much that they could do in between yes it is exciting and frustrating for my field because there's such good options. Yeah. I'll see people posting in forums. Like I have this C-section scar pain and then all the women with the same thing post and and they don't know, but like, Oh, you know, you'll just learn to live with it or, Oh, you know, do massage. And I just want to say like, ah, there's this therapy that's I'm telling you, one treatment will make a huge difference. I'm hoping that we can bring mom belly to every state and that every woman, this is what a client said out of her mouth, was every woman who has a C-section should be and have the choice and scheduled for this procedure six months after for wellness care, for preventative medicine, so that they don't have to suffer. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I don't believe that we in in the Western world as a collective really believe in preventative care, but I feel like that's another conversation for another day because, you know, we're so driven by insurance companies and how doctors make money that it, it's not like within their interest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know. Yeah. Insurance doesn't cover it. it. Yeah. yeah. And maybe one day it will. But honestly... I don't even feel inclined to be a part of that system at all because of how broken it is. So when Medicare started covering uh, acupuncture for back pain, they did a study for the the most common reason people do acupuncture, which is low back pain. And oh, lo and behold, they found acupuncture to be effective. Surprise, surprise. So now Medicare covers it. Some people were on the fence of, yay, now that Medicare is covering acupuncture for this, it's going to be our gateway into the rest of the medical world. And then you have the other camp who's like, oh, yay, then Medicare is going to set a price, which is like $35, $25. And then every insurance company is going to drop acupuncture to worthless. So there's an advantage and disadvantage to being embraced by the Western medical world. It's a a big conversation. (laughs) Yeah, you want to be included. And at the same time, I don't want to be in (laughs) in some cases with that world. And that mentality of if my insurance doesn't pay for it, that I'm not going to pay for it, but they're willing to go pay for a trip to Hawaii and their new car. I mean, I've literally shown people like, yeah, let's reverse all these conditions. It's like 3000 bucks over the course of a year. You have all your medical herbs, everything. And they're like, oh, wow, that's really expensive. My insurance doesn't cover it. Look at this new Escalade I just bought. <laughs> or this happened yesterday, giving this sweet teenager 
acupuncture for severe back pain. I was doing a favor for a friend of mine. She's in the ER getting scans. They're about to do emergency surgery on her. Come in, I get the pain to zero in a treatment. And she looks at me and she's like, do you guys do lip filler here? And I'm like, yeah, but you'd have to ask your mom. It's like $750 for a vial. Do you have that money? She's like, oh yeah, I'll get it. And I'm like, you can't ask your mom for this money because her mom works really hard for her kids. She's five. No, no, I'll get it. And she walks out the door, doesn't offer to pay me for helping her acupuncture. I just took away 10 of 10 pain in her back and her priorities are to get money, $750 to fill her lips. That's the battle that I struggle with as an entrepreneur, helping people and having this really great gift to offer. And people don't want to pay for it, but they want everything else that our culture prizes. And there are some people super willing to put in the time and effort it takes to get well. But it's a, it's a, it's a, tough, a tough career path. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. With a lot of like things that mess with your mind, yeah. The Kylie Jenner mentality. Yeah. 90, like I say, 95% fail rate the first five years. Acupuncturist. I mean, I picked, oh, really? I picked wow. a tough one. Yeah. It's not easy. And every day I, I have thoughts of doing something different. Sweet people will post and like Edmund's moms about how much I help them. And it keeps me going. It keeps me going. Yeah. I have this like theory in Edmonds and I'm working with you and other wellness companies within the town and I want to band together and figure out how to activate these Edmonds moms who are driving around in their fancy SUVs with their $40 Stanley water bottles and getting them to vote, getting them to like invest the time and energy into all these other kind of outward appearance things to like inward whole wellness and that's not to say that they're not but I just have a theory that I I want to test but I I'm working all these different ways to try to activate them like how do I get you to care and and get you in the seat and it's a lot like all these businesses in this town I have to physically bring people to them or they will not understand the value yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. The education piece is tough. And it's easy for me to see because I know the power and the magic and the just the absolute brilliance of Eastern medical theory. But other people, they just have no idea. It's like it's a whole rabbit hole that I went down and absolutely love. My life would not be the same without it. But how do you, you know, show people that? The Bell's Palsy woman, she comes in and her list of medical conditions and she wants help with Bell's palsy. How do you tell someone that Bell's palsy is a result of not just happenstance and not just bad luck, but you have this whole whole history of not taking care of yourself and that if we work, you don't want to just treat the Bell's palsy because this could happen again or something else is going to happen. How do you convince people to go to the very deepest root of their health and get well and eat well. And, and people don't want, a lot of people have the mentality, just fix this. Like my face is now drooping. That's what it takes to get people in the door. Migraines every day. My face is drooping. I'm pooping blood, like serious shit. And they come to me and they're like, fix me. No one else can. And I'm going to give you one shot. And how long have you been seeing your doctor for pooping blood? Oh, six years, but you want, so it's this weird Jesus complex. They don't want me to be Jesus, but they want me to be Jesus. And then they're like, oh yeah, acupuncture doesn't work. Except my husband who got convinced because of that, he had acute pain in his elbow from work from home for two years and finally went to acupuncture and now doesn't have any pain and is addicted to cupping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cupping, cupping spell. Yeah. So not to rant, but... but like you said, it takes that acute, yeah, it takes that acute something. And then maybe it's because they've been failed so many times. Like, it's so interesting to think of like the psychology and why we blow off things and embrace others. Yeah. The coolest part about what I do is when people come in, they, they really are ready and they really trust 
there's a lot of skepticism, but when, especially when someone's referred to me by someone else who had good results, those people are more like warm leads than cold leads. And they're apt since their best friend or their mom were helped to trust. So when people come all in and they do my program, you know, just it's this price, four months, everything's included, all the acupuncture, all the herbs, let's do this. And the recoveries are remarkable if people can come in and open their minds and just know that I have their best intentions in mind and that I stay up at night like dorking out on which herbs are going to help them I go above and beyond and maybe that's why <laughs> business is tough because I sometimes don't treat it like a business because it's a conflict of interest I think sometimes when you want to help people and then you profiting too I honestly sometimes as an entrepreneur just want to do acupuncture and eastern medicine because it's my love and then I want to do other things like this laser business and, and mom belly mend so I can actually be the entrepreneur and create businesses that can be bought and sold and then keep this sacred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a teacher in high school who was a lawyer. He was our history teacher and he was just like the most awesome, best teacher I had in high school. And he was like, yeah, I do law so I can make money and I teach because that's what I love. Yeah. So, yeah, so entrepreneurship it teaches you a lot about yourself and what you're doing and why. And I've tried to scale acupuncture, but then it just doesn't feel right for me. Like seeing six people an hour. Some people do it and they do great medicine, but I don't know. I like to sit down with someone for like that full hour and and go deep. Well, I definitely prefer it that way. I've been to, I think I mentioned to you before that I started out in acupuncture going to a community acupuncture place and you're all kind of in the same room and it's, I think maybe like 15 minute increments and I didn't mind it at all. I, yeah, I had a great experience, but uh, I definitely prefer what you offer and the beautiful atmosphere and views. I just think everybody needs to come and experience what you do. Thank you. I agree. You have seriously changed i mean i always say this to you carly but like i want to write a google review but what am i going to write like i used to poop my pants every day and now i don't but i guess now i'm saying out on live <laughs> thing anyway so yes carly's <laughs> carly saved my digestion and it has been a game changer yeah seriously right. and how long right were you suffering with that four years and how long did it take us to how like, long did it take remember consistently like probably three months yeah 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 and it hasn't gone backwards yeah which is remarkable because I'm a terrible consistency human but um <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for yeah. sharing your story yeah. Carly um do you want to dive into the rapid fire questions now sure okay unless um, you guys have anything else are we I mean we could talk we day, could talk for honestly. hours I know. <laughs> So um, I'm going to start with the first one, and then Whitney and I are going to go back and forth here, mixing it up a little bit. So what are you proudest of in your business right now? Well, it, it might be a different answer every day, but today I had some big business decisions to make regarding working with other people and partnering with some other business ventures. And I feel so proud that through everything I've learned, I know my worth and my value. So when someone negotiates with me and offers me less, I say no. No, because yes. this is what I have to offer. Yeah. Yes. So I'm having to have a really tough conversation. People want to walk into my clinic. They see how pretty it is. The patient population that I've worked on delivering good care to, good reviews, and they want a piece. So they'll come in and feel entitled to some of what I've created. And it can be easy to fall prey to people's big ideas and their visions and money. And, and I had to just say, this is what I am and I know what I'm worth. So no, take it or leave it. Go start your own business. Go rent a place. Go, go build it out and have fun with it. And not to be so rude. I, you know, it's funny. I'm like apologizing for that. But it feels so empowering to just know my value and not need. So I'm proud today <laughs> yeah. of that. As you should be. Yeah. That's not a that small thing. That is a thing. big deal. I learned my lesson. <laughs> Sometimes you got to learn it over and over until you can actualize on it for sure. Uh, tell us about a book you read or a podcast you listened to recently that changed the way you're thinking about your life or your business. 
I mean, the first one that pops to mind, my business coach sent it to me. He's so sweet. And he just had a simple note. It was an Amazon delivery, and it said, scale the CEO before you scale the business. And he sent me Atomic Habits. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, God, a book about habits, <laughs> barf. You know, and I was like, okay, scale it. He had a good point. I liked his little one-liner, so I thought if he's sending it to me, it must be good. And honestly, I didn't finish it, but the first couple chapters really changed the way I see progress and just doing small things and not doing big changes overnight. And it, yeah, I think I've lost 10 pounds from COVID era and implementing that strategy, which is just small changes that lead to big changes over time. You're like the fourth person that have has said that book on the yeah. podcast and I, I, I just really funny. need to read it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. funny. Neither of us have read it yet. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> What would your last meal be? Oh, if I died? Sushi. I love sushi. Sushi whore. Like what kind of sushi? So, Elaborate. Spicy, spicy scallop rolls are my favorite. I love mackerel, like grilled saba. I actually had some two days ago and have some for lunch. I love Japanese food. And I, I grew up with Mike Shimizu. He'd make grilled mackerel with daikon radish. So good. Japanese food, hands down. Yum. I was just talking to him yesterday how we want to go to Japan and eat. All of my adventures are food yes. driven. Yes. Invite me. I will totally come. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We like we want like insider stuff, you know. What is the best business purchase you've made under $100 in the last 6 months? Oh. Best business purchases under 100. Everybody hates the under 100. Can it be something free? Yeah. And it's your business your way, so you can cheat. So at a medical office, they couldn't figure out how to work these. You know the tables I have that are like, they're not just massage tables. There are tables that go up and down and like flex the back and stuff like that. They couldn't figure out how to work them, so they were just going to throw them away. So we, Debbie, good friend, brought them up here. And so now people, I had one in my main room, so it's like the deluxe room. I bring like all new patients in there, but now we have them in all the rooms and it was free. So people can have an extra cozy experience and they were free. Yeah. I, I feel like I should think more about the under a hundred. I don't know. That works. That's perfect. Okay. Why not? <laughs> and finally, the last question is what's lighting you up lately? I'm going to just go back because, and I want to complete that thought. The tables are so important, even though the free is because patient experience is so important. So if you can improve your client's experience at your business, then you'll do good. Okay. And then what's lighting me up? Uh, going back to being proud, what's lighting me up is feeling so confident in myself and it, with that particular decision, like I feel really at peace. Whereas when you have to make hard decisions and you're being pulled out of your, Grace calls it your source connection. You have to stay within your field and your body and your connection to spirit. And when that's solid, like other people can kind of draw you out of it because you want what they have or you think they're better than you or you want something they have. You start to pull energy from them. But if you can stay connected to yours, it's so powerful. So implementing that actually last night and today with this really big business decision lights me up because I feel empowered. Yeah. That's great. I, feel empowered. I have something similar where I've actually been talking to my husband a lot about this of like, my decisions aren't always going to make sense to other people. And if it makes sense to me and it feels right in my body, then I know it's going to work out. And that has been mm -hmm. proven over and over again. And in the opposite way too, of like, this could be like hugely financially abundant, but it just feels gross or not right i'm gonna say no and just know that the that's making space for the right thing and kind of like surrendering into trust and and in myself regardless of external sources uh, and i just love that for you too because it's so easy to say and 10 million percent harder to do so yes. good job yes it's very uncomfortable yeah the wobble grace calls it you get wobbly so when you're super clear, it, it feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Grace is a now local spiritual teacher and coach and an officiant and counselor. And so we need to talk to her eventually too. Yeah. Yeah. I want to meet her. Yes. You guys have said really good things. Yes. Um, Carly, before we let you go today, where can people find you and connect with you? Um, the best way, which is funny, is through text message, uh, 425-361-2376. It's the best way to get a hold of me. Text my work phone, and I will get back to you in, in between patients, sometimes late, sometimes early, but direct access. Um, or you can go to my website, iriswellnesscenter.com, and submit the contact form, and I'll get back to you through email. I love that you're our first phone number. <laughs> Straight to the point. Like, do it or don't. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you so much for being here with us today, Carly. I know, like, we're going to see you a million times after this. So, it's yeah. so exciting. But um, we are, I'm honored that you chose us to be your very first podcast. Yay. Thank you, guys. Yes, me too. All right. right, And let's do our super awkward ending. (laughs) Uh, Bye, friends. Uh, Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. This episode's music was provided by Sloan Best. And editing provided by Kayla Shute.